How was the experience of you of recording that song, Roof Garden? Um, it was a ball, man. It was always fun. You know, I love working with Steve. You know, I talked to him a few months ago. I'm going to give him a call again soon. We're old pals, man. Before I played with him on record dates before I started producing. So I already knew Steve. And I don't think anybody has got better time than him. Now, we didn't record that stuff back in the day with a click. Rarely did did I use a click. Sometimes. Is on Roof but Garden a, a click or not? I don't remember. But in his feel, man, was just incredible. Man. Yeah. It, he's he's so smooth man and everything's just so like polite and 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 grooves man and he's the king of simplicity too yeah he doesn't overplay man ever i don't remember what i told him but i said look guys this is kind of a funk tune it's it's going to have a taste of funk to it you know always abraham laboreal on bass yeah most of the I said, no, it's a funk groove, man. Let's just think of it as a funk groove, you know, tilted a little bit. And George Duke on piano was perfect, man. He came up with great little Phil chordal licks, you know. And um, did I, I played a muted guitar part in that song, yeah. probably. Yeah, that track felt great, man. It, it, it feels great. Oh, I got a story for you. <laughs> We were getting a drum sound. Maybe it was the first time I worked with him in my studio when I hired him. And um, I brought him in New York, you know, because I he was living back there. And um, it cost a lot more bread, but I didn't mind. I wanted him on a, on a bunch of stuff. So I said, okay, Steve, um, let me get the set the levels and EQ the drums, right? So we we'll work on the snare for a bit. And I get the snare, you know, EQ the way I want. And then the kick you know, then the Toms and he was only playing at about half, well, maybe a, a, a third of what a fill could end up being volume wise. So we do the first take of a tune or rundown. We did the first rundown and he plays a fill man, you know, one of those duck it a bomb things, you know, and the meters were just pinned. I said, Steve, When we're doing the wax for me to set the levels, you got to hit a go from medium, soft, medium, and hard. So I said, everybody take a break. I got to work with Steve for about a half an hour here. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll like that. that you you got to love that story, right? Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. It's because he has uh, such amazing dynamically range. You can, big, big, so big, big range. That's And another makes him great man you know and he plays i think very soft in the studio he really makes it sounds big by playing soft it's Maybe. crisp sometimes and it's also big sometimes yeah i'd have him tune it way down when i wanted the big fat sign sound and i'd let it be crispy when i didn't want when i you know when i wanted more of a less bottomy sound um so that was the key it was the tuning when when it got when i you know when i used when i wanted that sound and um dave weckel loves that sound by the way he always tells me that man how did you get that i said yeah. i had to tune the snare drum down i did it with all drummers but but steve's was the best sounding and at that low end stuff my name is jake or jake the rake or rake most of my friends call me rake and long story how the name came but um anyway so when i was getting a drum sound with steve on one of the sessions i said steve man it's time to replace the snare head it's beat up it's not vibrating equally every drum like tom and snare you know when you tune your drums you're hitting uh right around each lug and then you tune it to get rid of any beating anyway so i said steve man you got to replace the head it's too dead it it there's no life to it it's not evenly tuned and even though we have it padded down it's just not sounding like it should so the head's too shot it's got too many dents in it to, to ring properly so he changed the head And after he changed the head, 
He gave me the old head. <laughs> oh, wow, man. Can you see what it says? Yeah, yo, Rake. I sounded good out there. <laughs> it sounded good out here. Out here, yeah. Uh, you, you gotta love that, right? Yeah, man. So I stuck it in a frame because I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, I'm glad I did. I gotta send Steve a picture of this. He'll crack up. Oh, man. It's amazing. You can you can see how shot the head is, right? Yeah, but for us drummers, then this it, the head gets so thin that it's always a balance. Then it sounds also the best for, a, <laughs> for well, us. It, it's got to be broken in. We know we yeah. know it. The, of course, you have to break it in. What's the date on this? Now, for uh, five April eighty two. So there you go. Yeah, man. And um. And it's in just an ambassador, the Remo ambassador drum head. I'm doing an autobiography. That's what I have to do next. After I mix jar, I'm going to video myself doing an autobiography. There's, there'll be some funny stories, you know, um, there'll be, it, it'll, it should be fun. And um, a lot of inside stories and weird stuff too, that happen on sessions and all that kind of stuff. Then I'm doing this book with Stefan and Pepe Olsen I told you about. That's the Chord Dictionary, a thousand rhythm guitar parts, and a lot more. Then the other thing, what I'm, what's what's after that? Then the YouTube channel. Well, the YouTube channel will get going before the guitar book, and the uh, it's actually guitar keyboard and maybe some. We're going to do some drum stuff too, because Pepe's a drummer. So the order's going to be autobiography. YouTube, uh, Jar album, first Jar album, Jar 2. The album's going to be called Code. Um, then, and that's me and Randy Goodrum, by the way, and you can, available, it'll be available through my stuff, and the old al album's available through my site. Uh, okay, so Jar, autobiography, YouTube channel, then the guitar and keyboard and drum book. Wow. So that's the order. Oh, the DX7, the DX7. library somewhere in there and for anybody that doesn't have fender e the f famous e electric piano if you're a keyboard player you want this man yeah there's no roads ever there is not a better roads ever okay period wow you don't have to look around man and it's just piece of cake man because you can play on any keyboard you want oh it's great i think i got all the pitches in man yeah great man <laughs> all right Thank you for all the stories and for your time, of course. My pleasure.